For our last operation on a binary search tree, we are going to learn how to delete a node from the tree given its value. And I'm going to be honest when I say the delete method is probably the most complicated of all the operations. So if you struggle to understand, don't worry about it. Like I always say, rewatch the video two or three times and it will start to make sense. It is one of those methods where understanding the visual representation of the delete operation is very important. So please make sure you pay attention when we go over the slides and try to relate it to the code we write afterwards. Let's begin. We're going to understand deletion across three different scenarios. Scenario one, the node to be deleted is a leaf node. That is, it has no child nodes. In our example, three is a leaf node. In this case, we simply remove the node from the tree. The resulting tree has 10, five and 15 as the three nodes. Scenario two, the node to be deleted has one child node. In our example, five is that node. In this case, remove the node and replace it with its child. So the node value instead of five is going to be its child value, which is three, and we then detach the child node itself. This is applicable for both left or right child scenarios. Finally, scenario three, the node to be deleted has two child nodes. In our example, that node is 10, which is of course the root node. In this case, you copy the value of the in-order successor to the node and delete the in-order successor. And if you're wondering, the in-order successor of a node in a binary search tree is the next node in the in-order traversal sequence. And in a binary search tree, the in-order successor is a node with the least value in its right subtree. In our example, the right subtree for the root node has just one node, 15, which would also automatically become the minimum value. So replace the node's value with the minimum node's value, which is 15, and then remove that corresponding node. Quite a bit to understand, but hopefully you've understood the different scenarios we have to address when implementing the delete operation. Let's head back to Replit and write the code. Let's call the method delete, which accepts a value that a node in the tree might contain. Within the method body, we're going to call another delete node function as we are going to rely on recursion. This dot root is equal to this dot delete node passing in root and value. Let's now define the delete node function, which actually takes care of removing a node from the tree. Delete node accepts the root of the tree or the subtree and the value. Within the body, we first make a check to see if the tree is empty. If root is equal to null, we return root. The reason we return root and not null is to ensure recursion works when we have several nodes in a tree. If the tree is empty, root is null anyway. If the tree is not empty, we need to first find the node that contains the passed in value. And for that, we once again rely on recursion. If value is less than the root node value, we traverse the left subtree. So root dot left is equal to this dot delete node passing in root dot left and value. Similarly, if the value is greater than the root node value,
root dot write is equal to this dot delete node passing in root dot write comma value. If both these conditions fail, it implies we have found the node whose value is equal to the passed in value. And this is where we need to address the three scenarios from the slides. Scenario 1, the node to be deleted is a leaf node. That is, it has no child nodes. So if not left child and not right child, we simply remove the node from the tree. Scenario 2, the node to be deleted has one child node. In this case, remove the node and replace with its child node. So if there is no left node, we return the right node. Else if there is no right child, we return the left child. If both the scenario checks fail, the node has two child nodes. In this scenario, we copy the value of the in-order successor to the node and delete the in-order successor. And I have already mentioned that the in-order successor of a node is the minimum value in the right subtree. So we are going to update the root node's value with the node that contains the minimum value in the right subtree. So this dot min, which we have defined in the previous video, and we pass in root dot right. We then delete that node. Root dot right is equal to this dot delete node, passing in root dot right, comma root dot value. Finally, to make sure the changes to the root node are reflected, we return root. That is our delete method. Let's make sure it works as expected. I'm going to keep the insertion calls as is and remove the rest of the code. We also have just the four nodes, 10, 5, 15, and 3, so I am also going to remove node 7. Next, I'm going to use the level order method to verify what the tree looks like. So bst.levelOrder. Run the code and we see 10 in the first level, 5 and 15 in the next level, and 3 in the second level. Let's now delete 3 which is a leaf node. Call level order to verify. Run the code and we see 3 has been removed and the rest of the nodes are still in order. 10, 5, 15. Let's now delete 15 which has one child node. Run the code and we see 15 has been removed. 5 has been bumped up to level 1 from level 2. We have 10, 5 and 3 as our new level order traversal. Finally, let's delete 10 which has two child nodes. Run the code and we see the minimum node in the right subtree, which is 15, is the first element logged since it is now the new root of the tree. We have 15, which is the root node, and in the next level, we have 5 and 3. Our delete method works as expected. Again, if you found this a little confusing, please spend time re-watching the video and make sure you have a pen and paper to trace the method execution with the three scenarios. That will help you gain a much better understanding. Alright, with that, we come to the end of this section on trees. More specifically, binary search trees. Starting next video, let's learn about graphs. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.